It's interesting. I have a couple friends here tonight that have come all the way out from Long Island, uh, Christine and Randy. And Randy, I have to mention, uh, we first met in the seventh grade. Uh, so Randy, you knew me before I had any idea I was adopted. And then uh, it was actually on April 19th, 1973, when we were in the eighth grade in Mrs. Rooney's math class, where I discovered <laughs> uh, that news at home <coughs> in the math class. Uh, so thank you for coming. Uh, this poem's called Elusive Enterprise, and it's about that enterprise that we all remember from a childhood, the Star Trek Enterprise. And uh, it's uh, about having discovered that strange vehicle um, circling in space on the black and white television screen, and while uh, visiting a, a lawyer's office uh, while we closed on a new house, the house in Brentwood where I grew up on Long Island, um, there was probably more going on between my parents and the attorney, more discussion than I realized, and uh, this uh, poem imagines what some of that discussion might have been like. Elusive Enterprise. I'm failing to find Star Trek on TV, June 1967, in our attorney's office. My parents had signed. Tonight, the house was ours. Cross leg before a portable TV. I clicked through channels, searching for the stars I glimpsed before, just once. The starship's powers, warp speed and flight, burned into memory. Still in our lawyer's office, after hours, three grown-ups bent, conversing. From the floors near threadbare rug, I called for help, politely, clicking the dial notch by notch. The stars, captain and crew, lost somewhere on the shores of planets filmed in color, seen blue-gray. About the other case, the boy is ours, what rights can they claim when he's lived for years, our only son? I might have heard, had I eavesdropped more closely, turning from the stars, blue light on screen, to parents who graze me, theirs alone, almost from birth, though legally no one's perhaps, despite a home now ours, that ship beyond reach, hurtling past the stars. And it's also fortunate that, uh, that, I, uh, that these two friends have come from Long Island because they um, knew both of uh, my adoptive parents. And this is a, perhaps a child memory of my adoptive mother, Betty. It's called Zim's Birds Revisited. And uh, it's after Herbert Zinn and Ivory Gabrielson's Birds. These were those golden books you could actually find in stationery stores back in the old days, as well as paperback bookshops. Uh, and uh, uh, I've always been fascinated by them, and do still keep them handy, those very same uh, threadbare uh, taped books. Zim's Birds Revisited. Our guide to the most familiar birds encouraged us to imitate as best we could each line or curve that challenged us. More avian shapes than we could deftly imitate, soft down, red crest, appeared on scraps of paper, color penciled, shapes rendered imperfectly. I pressed the pencil down so hard I'd scraped through to the tablecloth beneath. My crooked renderings impressed you still. You drew to humor me, Dust cloth set down, bird book beneath your gaze, wood thrush and whippoorwill gaze back. You drew to humor me. What would it take to make them real, look real at least? Poor whippoorwill or cedar wax wing, not of wax at all. Why didn't mine look real, like yours? Cross hatch and pencil scratch. A few small seeds, full moon to wax above a great horned owl's gaze or yours. Nuthatch that crawling scratched a branch, reversed and crawled away beneath your reading glasses glaze. Where all the plumage, all the pages, those I crumbled, threw away, those you set aside with praise, all passed, the bird book's scattered pages splitting from its broken spine. I signed the drawings that you praised, emerald loon against the tide, your finest sketch. Its broken spine, scotch taped, we shelved the golden guide, 
my impulse quenched. Years, like the tide, would take you. Now, what would I need or seek without your praise to guide as best you could each line or curve, ghost-like, a wing's touch, all I need? For you, I drew those vanished words.